Cool. So what I want to do is uh, invite up Andrea uh, from the LVR team uh, to actually talk a little bit about uh, how the how the player actually works. Cool. Do you want anything up on screen or? Oh, you, you have full command of the browser. There. Sure. Hi, I'm Andrea. I'm the developer at LVR. Um, so at LVR, we are a research group doing VR video, and we actually film a lot of our own videos. This is obviously not our video, but if you I guess I can go to our player, the version that we have live on the web. Fork me on GitHub. Um, <laughs> and um, none of these videos are great quality. You'll note that I chose WebM because right now a lot of the browsers don't handle. Um, is this, oh, this is the right video. I'm like, which video am I playing? Um, so this video is stereo which is maybe not the easiest thing to tell. Um, so our browser, our player handles both stereo and mono, which is actually not that much of a change code-wise. Uh, we come from a YouTube background. The other people in our group, uh, Vi Hart and Emily Eifler, both have fairly popular YouTube channels. And so when we started making video, our real goal was we want to focus on how can we make 360 video, something that's accessible to everyday people. There's a lot of people who are making things for Hollywood, you know. Yeah, and if you have, you know, $10,000 in Hollywood, you can build your camera and you can film it and it'll look amazing. But there aren't that many people who are focused on the YouTubers of the future. So because we're focused on the YouTubers of the future, we actually wanted WebVR really early on. Uh, when I started doing WebVR stuff, the WebVR browsers weren't available yet. So in order to get Oculus data into the browser, I was using a plugin called VR.js, which worked. It was a little finicky, but I will say I was so relieved when WebVR came out as a browser feature. Um, and it was also a really fast change. Like they talked about the API earlier, but really like pulling out what I had before and putting in native browser support took maybe an hour counting the debugging time, which is kind of crazy. Um, uh, so, I don't remember what else is. Oh, so yeah, so the, we're, I'm using WebGL here. I'm actually not using 3JS, probably one of the relatively few people doing WebGL without 3JS <laughs> because it is not the easiest thing to do. Although you can see that the does work if you're not using 3JS. Um, and I'm basically using the video tag, using HTML5 streaming video, and using that as my texture uh, and texturing onto a sphere, both the, the things we support down here, echo rectangular and echo rectangular 3D projections. Um, and if you go to player.lobr.com and you have your own videos, you can also load them down here. So we are happy to play anyone's videos. Um, you can fork it on GitHub and load your own videos in if you want to share. Um, yeah. <laughs> Another thing I wanted to talk about was controls. Um, because once you are in full screen mode and you're playing a video, I know that they showed like, you know, oh, you could have these controls on top and that's really awkward. And I know the Leap Motion people are working on their own thing for controls. But what I found worked for video was actually just to use keyboard controls. Um, most people have enough familiarity with their keyboard, I hope, that they can at least hit the P button or the space bar to play and pause. And then once you have it paused, you could have like a pop-up controls show up, but um, there's also like, there's keyboard controls available that are clearly being flaky right now. Oh, because it's paused. Um, that actually let you rotate the video. So if you are doing demos or you're giving it to someone else and they're on the other side of the screen, but you still want them to be facing forward, and you'd be amazed how often you like hand it to someone and then they're like, wait, where are the people I'm supposed to be talking to? Um, you can do all these things while in full screen mode. Um, so for as far as controls go, I'm actually a fan of having keyboard controls being the 
main thing. Um, however, for video, another thing we've thought about is sort of semi-interactive video, where I'm watching this video, and if I start looking over at the window for a while, then it might take you to a different video outside the window. So it makes more sense if it's a door and you're in a scene, and if you look at the door, it won't take you there until you've looked at the door for a while. Um, and that could be using, like, A, like if you focus in this direction four or five seconds um, sort of thing. Uh, so I think there's a lot of interesting things to be done with controls and that really haven't been explored yet. Um, and there's a lot of things where if you want controls that are accessible to anyone who hasn't purchased some kind of external device to do controls with, so you're kind of limited with, to keyboard, mouse, and I guess since they're watching this, probably a headset. Um, <laughs> Uh, uh, that's what's worked for us. The, the very original version just had these controls at the bottom, and that was a disaster. So don't do that. Um, yeah.